This is Glenn. Glenn thought doing drugs would make him popular and cool. Glenn, like the other 64% of teens, got his drugs from a friend. The drugs make Glenn think he feels amazing and happy. Glenn is the same as every other teen with an addiction. In recent study, it was stated that sugar is more addictive than cocaine, whether it be to drugs or energy drinks. So, Maestro, what do you do when you feel tired in the morning? Um, I don't know. I don't feel tired in the morning. I get a good night's sleep, eight hours or more, and then I wake up. But if I do feel tired, I would get a cup of cold water or drink a cup of tea. But well, do you do you drink energy drinks? No, I don't think that I would like energy drinks. You know, they have a lot of caffeine. They're like jam packed with caffeine and sugar, and a lot of unnecessary chemicals. And why would I drink something that's not good for my body? Or what if you don't? Well, what if you don't have the energy to stay awake during like the regular school day or on this a regular like Saturday? Well, it's a regular Saturday. I just take a nap. If I'm really tired, you know, and if it's a school day, I would also just go to the bathroom and splash a face of water, get some from the water fountain, or, yeah, that's about it. Alright, thank you, Major. Mm -hmm. Would students get in trouble if they told you they did drugs or they drank? Well, that's kind of a yes and no answer. Um, First of all, our main concern if a student were to come to one of us administrators would be to make sure that they're okay and that their, you know, their health is safe. Um, that's our first concern. Now, obviously, there are some implications to that, that yes, there could be a little bit of trouble for them, but remember, sometimes it is better to confront something like that head on, you know, accept the consequences of what you've done so far, than kind of wait until it becomes a bigger problem because you didn't let somebody know. Um, so when we say trouble, I, I would say that first I'd want to help them, make sure they were okay, and then we'd see what would have to happen because of school consequences. All right. yeah, what are the consequences <laughs> if you get caught with drugs or alcohol? It's a good question. Um, you know, with any kind of infraction of a school rule, we have our code of conduct that we consult. It, it actually outlines a lot of the steps that we need to take for students in a variety of different disciplinary issues. When it comes to drugs and alcohol, it is also very specific. Um, there's a range of outcomes when there's something like this that can happen. Obviously, when it's more severe and drug-related, um, it could be up to and including being sent to an alternative location instead of being here at Denison. But then again, sometimes there's circumstances where you know it's a, it's a less consequence than that because again, a student needs help more than they need punishment. Their alcohol, and they were to sell it to another kid. Oh well, that's a specific. There's actually specifics in here. Um, so in the code of conduct, for example, um, sale, distribution, or possession, the selling of that of those substances, drugs, um, that is actually grounds for expulsion, our highest possible, which would be removal of the school, from the school rather, for a year. So that's actually the most serious. Uh, it kind of outlines other things like the use or simple possession of it, so you had some but you didn't sell it or give it to anybody, or you used it but didn't sell it. So there's, there's different levels. It's actually several pages of the code of conduct when it comes to drugs and alcohol. So it's like any other thing though, any other referral that kids get sent down here from, we obviously look at the whole of the situation and then address it appropriately based off of what our code of conduct tells us we need to do. So Trace, um, what do you do when you feel tired in the morning? Wet my face with water. Do you, um, do you drink energy drinks? Yes. Why do you drink uh, energy drinks? Because they're good and make me not tired anymore. Approximately how many times a week do you drink energy drinks? Only really on the weekends when I'm doing stuff. How many energy drinks do you consume over the, like, the weekends? Like probably six energy drinks maybe. How do you normally feel if you don't get your normal amount of energy drinks? Tired and don't want to do anything. All right, thank you. How much time would a person get in jail with possession of narcotics or alcohol on school property? Well, if they're within a thousand feet of a school zone, be charged with a third degree felony, and depending on the substance, could be a second degree felony. Now, a third degree felony uh, will not exceed five years in state prison and a second degree felony will not exceed 15 years in a state prison. It just depends on the narcotic and the amount. How much time would you get in jail if you were caught under the influence? Of alcohol? Of anything. 
Okay. Yeah. If, and you're, that you're a minor. Well, it's mainly going to be alcohol. Because um, let's say if a student get high, right, off marijuana. Well, we're not going to charge them for being high. We charge them for possession. So if a kid is caught with alcohol, then they would be charged with a misdemeanor, a second degree misdemeanor, which means that would be uh, county jail time. So that would not exceed a year in the county jail. What if someone is caught with possession of drugs with the intent to sell? Well, it's the same. Whether it's just possession or possession with intent to sell, it still just depends on the amount that they have on them. They may consider uh, intent to sell would be an amount that they say that they deem that exceed personal use. Um, but if you have it in, say, like five plastic baggies, right? Well, we don't think that's going to be personal use. Just on the amount you got five baggies, one person is going to have, um, he may have a bag, you know, or two. But if you got five baggies and then you, um, and if you have money on you that appears to be uh, drug related, uh, then they would charge you with intent to sell. So it just depends on the evidence that they have on you. So Jeremy, what do you do when you feel tired in the morning? Uh, splash water in my face. Um, so do you drink energy drinks? Yeah. Why? Uh, it gets me, you know, hype. Gets you hyped? <laughs> yeah. Approximately how many times a week do you drink energy drinks? Like six, five. Six energy drinks? Yeah, about. How do you feel when you uh, don't get your normal amount of energy drinks? Tired. Tired and anything else? Kind of like, don't want to do anything. All right, thank you, Jeremy. Yep. What Glenn didn't know was that those good effects of his drugs would soon turn into bad ones. He lost his friends, failed all his classes, and was close to dropping out of school. Glenn did not make the right choices and ended up becoming what he did not want to be. He realized that he must overcome and quit, so he decided to stop living a bad life and get on the right track. A track to an addiction-free life.